<clears throat> so this is my very first time looking at a laptop from Huawei. They're making some pretty compelling stuff based on the videos and pictures and, and reviews and things that I've seen on their products in the laptop space. Now, this stuff, it came out long before the issues, the problems, the Huawei ban and so forth. And at that time, many people that got a chance to get their hands on these products, Matebook X, and of course, Pro is in front of me here. This is the latest one now. They've put them at the very top of the of the Windows laptop list. Now I do know based on looking at photos that this thing is heavily inspired by the MacBook. Can you really tell other companies not to be inspired, not to take some of those elements and possibly improve them? You can't really do that, but you just hope that it's not a one-to-one -one copy. You hope that you have some uniqueness to it. This spec that I have in front of me, i7, 8550U, MX150 GPU, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD. What's funny about this laptop, and I talked about this on the Lou Later show downstairs, this thing popped on and off of the Microsoft store as the Huawei news stuff was breaking. It's been a controversial topic. You just have the text now which to me, uh, I kind of prefer. It's a really simple look. You can see the space gray. Anything space gray is okay with me, even if some people are gonna say it's copying. On the bottom, you can see we have the NVIDIA GeForce sticker there. You're not used to getting any degree of GeForce level graphics in something this thin and light. Like this thing is crazy slim, as you can probably tell. Two type C connectors over here. One of them is labeled as power, the other as Thunderbolt. You get a USB type A port, which is frequently you bump into things and have that versatility is useful. So Will, what is the weight of this thing? 2.9 pounds, so it's actually a bit lighter than a MacBook Air. So this is where things get very MacBook-ish, as you can probably tell. The keyboard, it's looking almost identical, though I'm sure there's a bit more travel here because it's not using those controversial butterfly key switches similar to what Apple has been doing, although they might change on the next generation. Appearance-wise, it's very reminiscent. The trackpad is huge, which is a good thing. It's got a glass touch to it. It's also got this Huawei share thing over here, which allows you to tap a Huawei device and just instantly share files. Also, the power switch up here is a fingerprint reader at the same time. A pretty tiny little power brick type C connector on it. Ooh, do you have the password for it, Will? All right, so uh, we're back. I think my hat might've changed. Uh, we took a little time because there's actually, this is a review unit of this laptop and there's a password on it. And it was like, what are we gonna do? And then Willie do, he got to the bottom of it. So like he set it up, we're ready to go now, okay? As you can tell, glossy finish. Now I'm, I should probably open up like a white background so you can see, look how slim that top bezel is. That's really wild. You have no front facing camera. The camera is now down here on the keyboard and it's identified by this little camera icon. And when you click it, it pops up like that. And now it's looking at you, Jack. Can you see that right there? Boom, that's a camera. The criticism, it kind of looks up your nose. It's looking up your nose and it's also just terrible quality. Maybe if I take the actual photo, it will help. No, no. So it's a terrible quality camera. I mean, they fit it into a, a key cap. How important is this? Like how big of a deal? There's Jack right there. Look at you, you crazy maniac Jack. Where are you? There you are. There, wait, there you are. Look at that, okay. I'm rarely satisfied with a video conferencing quality experience on one of these laptops, even when they have the camera in the right place. So for me, it's not a deal breaker. I can look past it, but it is worth noting. On the privacy side, I think some people might like the fact, Jack, you might like the fact, you can put the camera away. The quick, ooh, this is this is this one's okay. The quick brown fox. These are big keycaps. It's very MacBook-esque, but there's a little bit more travel. Obviously, there's no butterfly key switch situation going on. Jumps over the late. Now, I think part of the reason I might be so comfy here is just because of how much time I spent on MacBook keyboard. For me, the real story of this laptop is actually the display. I have to say, this is obviously ahead of what Apple's doing. And on Apple's latest stuff, even though you're spending between $1,000 and $2,000, you still can't get something with this type of screen to body ratio. That is just a crazy slim bezel. Now, obviously the chin on the bottom is a bit bigger down there. As you can see, your eye line is constantly along the top. And when you eliminate that bezel from the top, it's just, it's a very pleasing thing to see, much the same way it was when you started to see it pop up 
in smartphones. Maybe I could get a quick AB against your MacBook, Will. Would you really, would you mind? Can we just, is it a bit? Oh, interesting. Yours is space gray, right? Yes. What are you, what are you doing? Drinking a milkshake over here? What's <laughs> it's going so on? Dirty. What are I you doing? Apologize. What are you doing to it? This space gray is more bluish. It kind of looks more like raw, a raw metal. You can actually get a sense when they're side by side for how crazy low profile the butterflies are. It situation. is, yeah. It's like there's really no key travel. But very substantial. No, very it's a, it's a, it's it's a heavy click. This one is gonna give you a more traditional feel. If you've never felt the butterfly key switch, it's all noise, no travel. Exactly. But like a serious clack to it. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that they're both really solid once you press down on them. This one yeah. has a 91% body to screen ratio. You know what I mean? It, it looks fat by comparison. Now, is this how big of a deal is this look? If you use this other laptop over here on the, on the daily, you stop noticing the fact that you got this big forehead on it. Now, again, you probably want to compare this to the MacBook Air. Actually, we have a MacBook. What am I doing? This is a more one-to-one. -one. Would you look at that? <laughs> they look identical. They look so, when you Very similar. when you stick these two together, it's even more obvious where the inspiration came. Like we got, we got to just be honest about it. Yep, yep. Is this just a MacBook for people who want to use Windows? The Windows MacBook. I think the screen really makes a difference. Like the screen to body ratio. You feel like that's enough you of an improvement. You can get that for MacBooks. That's the thing. Will he do? And they, it's great. Will he do? And you have to believe that when Apple goes to their next version, at least some version in the future, they're gonna have to approach a more mm -hmm. aggressive screen to body ratio mm -hmm. as well. Now you would probably have to give up the front facing camera and put it somewhere else. Maybe, but... yeah, maybe. Or I've noticed, I think there's a new Dell laptop where they had a crazy slim bezel and were able to fit it. Or Mm. that Lenovo S940 from a recent video in which they just kind of like bumped yeah. up the bezel yeah. only in the center. And then that little bump up acted as the lift point mm. for the display. Can I just say something about this? Uh. You go to lift and it, it you know, it kind of, it does work one handed, but the thing slides around a little bit. You see that? Is it because there's rubber grips? You see that right there? This is the type of thing Johnny Ive used to do all he day would, long. Yeah, he would obsess over this. So I've been hearing a lot about this uh, this Apple card. Oh, and I mean, I remember when it was announced, it was already like, it was a hot topic. Cause it's I wouldn't listen this loud. Unusual type of product I'd probably for be... a tech company. Unusual type of product for Apple or really anybody in the space that we're used to covering. Not They're really. They're pretty good in the, the financial yeah. business. For the in voice, a, in a I think way. it's pretty clear. At least historically, that hasn't been the case. So essentially, they put out a, a flashy titanium credit card. And I just gotta keep it cool. And I'll be treated like a tool. So don't be acting like, acting like a fool. We've said it before, like the Mac MacBook speakers are typically better than what we're gonna test here on the PC side. I feel like this is kind of in between. It's one of the better PC speakers I've heard on a laptop. Mm -hmm. It's better than a lot of thin and light PC laptops that we've tested. There is some low end. I think you'll be satisfied with it, particularly when you pair it with this, with this screen. Mm -hmm. Could it be brighter? It could be. How many nits are we dealing with? Uh, 450. 450 nits, and it's weird that I am feeling that way, but I've been looking at 500 nits. Well, the, the directional keys over here. You don't like the layout. And, it's tight in there. Yeah, the up down buttons, they need to rework that. I agree. The trackpad is very nice. It might be the nicest Windows trackpad. This trackpad definitely beats my Lenovo trackpad that I'm currently using. So for those of you that haven't been following the channel and my, my, my laptop journey, I was on MacBooks forever. I left to try out Windows laptops. I've been loving life on a number of different laptops, daily driving. I was a bit upset with the keyboards on those units. I, uh, I had uh, multiple units fail in the studio here, a high percentage, cause like we actually had a lot of them working here at one point. And I used the MacBook for like a, I don't know, a decade. Even before that, I used PowerBooks. I had uh, the original MacBook polycarbonate. Mm. I've been in this. Okay. I've been yeah. at this. Yeah, I know that. So I moved on. I like the open-ended aspect, open-ended nature of the window side and the idea that I could really try out a bunch of different laptops and select one that was right for me with the specs as opposed to just accepting whatever Apple was giving me mm -hmm. or dealing with my uh, terrible E key. 
on the MacBook Air, for example. Mm -hmm. I was the sticky E. Yeah, we got to get that repaired. The stick E. This thing is taking aim at the MacBook Air. It's just it's attempting. I think there's no question this thing wants to be the MacBook Air of Windows laptops. I think they've achieved it. The stuff you're looking for is there. It's a pretty package, but you got to be if you go this direction, you got to be okay with people saying, "Hey, that's like that's yeah, it's it, slightly off. It's not a MacBook." No, but also you have to be you have to be okay with people saying that's obviously inspired yeah. by a MacBook. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of Windows buyers really need to be looking at this thing, to be mm -hmm. honest. But you do have to take out the part in which there's like a general apprehension regarding the Huawei brand right now. You gotta put that piece in because that's a valid thing for people. Yep. This thing was on the Microsoft site, then it was not on the Microsoft store. Yep. It went up, it went down. Then it was, what's the future? Where's the updates? And and so that that's a real thing if you're spending two grand. Mm -hmm. They have to consider that. There's a real well. thing to think about also. For sure. But if you... <laughs> oh, is this your show? <laughs> I was just going to ask, would you use this? On no, daily? absolutely not. No? Mm -mm. It's not I, your thing. No, because I'm, I'm away now. I'm away from this elegant styling. You see, I'm not... I moved away from the elegant thing. Yeah, you're more like utility. I like the tool nature of it. Yeah. The unit that I'm using right now, which is the X1 Yoga from Lenovo, when I look at it as a tool, it's a better tool for me than this is. Mm. And the reason is versatility of ports. I can flip it all the way back around if I so choose to. Right. Which I don't do that for... I got the better keyboard that I could, you know, mm -hmm. I feel real confident on that keyboard. Everything's looking nice now. Dell's looking nice now. Mm -hmm. Lenovo's looking nice now. HP's looking nice. Looking nice now is just everybody. Right. So then you look at those other pieces when you make your decision. And for me, if you can give me a bunch of ports and options on the side, I'm going to take it if I can get it. How about you, on the other hand? If you had to go to Windows right now and give up your MacBook, which Windows laptop would you grab? I you're, would probably pick this one. You're an elegant it's guy. It's like a nice ease into, you know, Windows, which yeah. I love using. I have a desktop. But this just kind of gives me the comfort of like, it's a sleek thing that I can take to like a coffee shop. And... You won't even notice. Yeah. You honestly, exactly. if you came from this, if you had a previous generation MacBook Air and I just like subbed it out for this, I'm like, you're going to try Windows for a bit. Mm -hmm. You ain't even going to notice. Yeah. I think uh, internally it gives me peace of mind. Right. It's just like, oh yeah, this is similar to a MacBook. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what they were going for. And that's definitely what this is similar to a MacBook. I'm gonna call it the Windows MacBook. <laughs>